girls those pots and pans that have you ever used those before? Like what their normal purposes are? <laughs> I don't think so either. You put them to good use. Hey, uh, I, I'm so excited to be here this morning. Week two of our sermon series, Wake Up More Than 24. And uh, if you're like me, the beginning of the year uh, is always a fun time to reflect, get ready for what God has in store for you. You've worked out your calendars. You've almost got all of your summer planned. And uh, make sure that all your kids are going to our kids' camps, student camps, our mission trips. You're going to hear all about those that are are you envisioning or just a a few weeks away. Uh, But it's also that time in each one of us to go, man, what do I need to do differently in 2024? And even though it's in there... Even though it's a new year, we serve the same God. And there's an enjoyment that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can build our life on him. And the real issue is what? Is us. And how we respond to him and to his truth. And that we wake up and live the life that he's called us to live. So we're praying for what? More in 24. And I don't know what that more for you is. Maybe you want to become more of a forgiving person, more of a loving person, uh, more of a generous person, uh, more available. Um, I don't know what it is, but I know Ephesians 3.20 says what? That he is able, God is able to do far more, exceedingly more, Greek word immeasurably more than we can ask, think, or imagine. According to his power that's at work where? Within us. And I love that verse on so many levels. He gives us permission, what? To ask and imagine, to believe for big things, that God is a big God. And he said, listen, don't go small on me. I want you to be what? A believer. And if you're going to believe, believe in big things. And then he says, what? It's going to begin, what? With the power that's working inside of you, that you play a part. So we both believe big, but we begin, he begins a new work inside of us. What's the new work he needs to begin in you in 2024? I hope you're ready to experience more in 2024. Now, our theme is wake up. Now, some of you, now, wait a minute, isn't sleep good? Uh, And it's good to be asleep when you're supposed to be asleep. It's just not good to be asleep when you're supposed to be awake. In fact, sleep defined as a state of inactivity with the loss of consciousness and a decrease in responsiveness to events taking place. So the problem is we're not designed to sleep the whole time because sleep is not really reality. In fact, that's where we dream and we don't have to respond appropriately. We're unconscious and we're inactive. And that's why when people, someone begins to struggle with depression, you'll see longer sleeping hours. They don't want to have to deal. They don't want to have to respond what's needed of them in that time. And spiritually speaking, all of us can get into a place of not what? Not responding correctly to the gospel, not being as active as we're supposed to, not in the reality of the world that we're to engage in. And we all can sometimes spiritually be asleep. And so it's time for us to wake up. Because if you and I oversleep spiritually, we'll miss out on that adventure that God has for us in that day and in that month and the time such as this, that if we're, if we're caught spiritually sleeping and oversleeping, we're going to miss out on the adventure that he has for you. Uh, if we go through the motions and just, you know what, I'm going to check it off. I'm going to go to church or I'm going to go to my home group or, or I'm going to give and I'm just going to get through the year. And hey, if when I have some time, I'll, I'll, I'll be in his word. I'll listen to some praise music on the song. And, and, and without even realizing, we're just kind of sleepwalking, just kind of going through the motions. And when that happens, we misappropriate things. And if you ever watch one sleepwalk, they're, they're, they're going through the motion, but it's not appropriate for that time and place. And you'll find that spiritually, that you're not applying um, God's word appropriately in your life because of the way you were raised or what you believe God is or the church is supposed to be. You're sleepwalking through this world. And it gets to be a real tragedy or It's no, it's no longer just oversleeping or, hey, I'm just making a mess of things that you could have a lot of anguish if you fall asleep at the will. Uh, last night uh, at around 10 p.m., someone in front of our driveway was involved in a, in a horrific head-on collision. Uh, Kelly and I had just had uh, uh, gone to sleep and uh, it woke her and I saw her and I looked and I, and I saw the, the flashing lights and we went out there and running down there, went down there, heard the conversation, do you need an ambulance, are you okay? And, um, 
uh, the next, you know, two hours or so. Jaden was actually about to pull in the driveway. Of course, as a mother, she thinks that's Jaden turning into our driveway. And, and, and I don't know if they fell asleep, if they didn't see someone, uh, but it was a horrific event. And, and literally last night, you know, at some point I'm trying to go to, we're going to sleep and with all the emergency crews there for a, a few hours. And, and we understand the gravity of falling asleep at a physical will, but do we understand the gravity of falling asleep at the spiritual will? Dads, moms, you know what I mean? I mean, is it, do you feel the weight of, man, your friend may not go to heaven because of you? Or, or your neighbor or your coworker that were spiritually asleep. And you know what? It'll cause this great anguish one day, won't it? We're like, man, God, you gave me 20 years. You gave me 30 years as a Christian. You gave me 40 years as a Christian. And I, I talked to this person a thousand times and I never talked about you. What I was spiritually asleep at the will. God, you put me in that high school. You put me in that workplace. I was your vessel. I was your choice for there. And I just snoozed. I just hit the snooze button. I had no idea you had put me there for spiritual purposes. So Paul tells us what? Wake up. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Besides this, you know the time, the hour has come for you to wake from your sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we first believed. He's going, listen, I don't know how many days we have. We better wake up because a lot of people know Jesus. And we're one day closer to that glorified body and being with him forever. And I love when you look at the first century church and you look at the early church, the, the urgency they lived with. They knew their time was short. They would probably get killed for their faith or Christ was returned. So they did everything possible to tell as many people as possible about the hope and the love and the salvation through Jesus Christ. And we're to live with that same kind of urgency that we're to wake up. I love in Psalms 90, 12. So teach us what? To number our days that we may have a heart of wisdom. We know we're not guaranteed tomorrow, but we also know we're not going to live forever. That we just have a few years, a few decades on this earth. You know, listen, you want a heart of wisdom? Start planning your life around the gospel and how many days you have and the impact that you can make up. So last week was week one, and we said, hey, let's wake up to his presence with his word. Let's wake up to his presence with with his words. And we talked about how his presence is our pleasure and our portion and our prize. And we talked about waking up to the words of God and spending time with him. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to text Devo uh, to that phone number, please do that. And uh, you're just basically getting a jump start to your personal time with the Lord every morning. We're doing it all together as a church. And uh, you'll receive that at 5 a.m. You can do it at whatever time in the morning uh, that you want to. But we're, we're waking up, what, in his word and letting, letting his word wash over us. Also want to uh, say thank you. Uh, maybe they're on your seat uh, or you get one your way out. Just if you haven't filled out uh, what you're fasting from as a church, we're doing a fast. The majority of people are fasting from some sort of medium. They've realized, hey, this is a distraction to my spiritual life. And so on this day or during this time, I'm fasting from those things that are keeping me asleep and not spiritually awake. And if you haven't started, it's a perfect time to start uh, today. So if you'll Fill that in and just turn it on the altar at the end of the service. Uh, we will uh, have someone pray for you every single day on the thing that you're fasting for. All right, here we go. Week two, wake up. Wake up to his peace with worship. Wake up to his peace with worship. Now, the word for peace that you'll see most in Scripture, um, especially in the Older Testament, is what? Shalom. Um, in fact, if you travel to the Middle East, if you know uh, Jewish friends, they're going to greet you what? With shalom. And shalom means, uh, it means peace. Now, but it means so much more than peace as you study shalom. Uh, it means uh, peace. It means a wholeness. It means a unity. It means a harmony in your coming and your going, that you're blessed. I mean, it's shalom. Shalom is the garden before sin. Uh, shalom is the marriage supper of the land. Uh, shalom is a picture of heaven where a lion lays next to a, a lamb. It's complete peace, wholeness, and we're called, he says what? Um, that, that shalom, this peace is on you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord upon his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Now, the issue is we all have what? We have a peace problem that if we were to describe our life, it wouldn't be so much uh, shalom. 
Uh, in fact, people are always upset with someone. We're more anxious than we've ever been. We worry about more than we have. And some of you already, in just a few days in 24, go, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know what I'm going to do. And you came into this place anxious and worried and burdened for a year that's just a few days old. And that's our tendency, isn't it? Our tendency is not to live um, with uh, peace. Now, look what um, Paul says. He says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace when? At all times and in every way. Wow. How you doing on that? That you and I are to be at peace at, in every way and at all times. See, we live in a place where all of us, we get, we're unsure and we're uncertain and we're anxious and we're bur- uh, uh, burdened. Now, I want to talk to you about peace and and working through this. I've got to start with the biggest problem with peace is this, is that um, most people are not at peace with God. You've got to be at peace with God. We talked about the awakenings uh, that we learned in history last week, and probably the closest awakening that we uh, have seen or our parents have seen is is an evangelical awakening that happened uh, through evangelists who, who went from town to town and crusade to crusade. And, and Billy Graham was probably the most popular uh, in that. I think he stayed in uh, New York City for 27 or 28 nights in a row and filling up Yankee Stadium. And, people, and, and his message was very simple. And it said, are you at peace with God? Are you at peace with God? Because most people are angry or upset or bitter or frustrated, and you can't have a relationship with someone that you're not at peace with. He said, are you at peace with God? Romans 5, 1, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does justified mean? Just as if I've never sinned before, that our sins are forgiven from what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And because of that, what? You can have the righteousness of God and you can be at peace with God. Because why? The opposite of shalom is sin. Shalom is to what? It's wholeness. It's, it's, it's um, harmony. And sin is brokenness and chaos and strife. And our problem is sin. And he says, listen, if you want to be just, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You see, you got to come to a place where you're at peace with God. Now, it's not only because to be at peace with God, then it's the peace of God is in you. It's that transition that, as every believer makes, where that God is with us, now God is in us. And we can either repress our sin or we can enjoy confessing our sin as a believer. Can't we? The temptation is, no, I'm fine, I'm good, I don't need to tell everybody. And so what? Um, Not all the time, but a lot of people aren't living in peace because they have unconfessed sin. That's already been forgiven for, they can have freedom for, but they just haven't confessed it. You confess it to God, he forgives it and forgets it, but if you want healing, he says confess it to one another. So you can be at peace with God and you can have the peace of God in you. That you can keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Peace with God. So you can have the peace of God. Now I'll give you a few things about peace. One, peace is the plan. Peace is the plan. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will what? Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so we're talking about waking up in this peace with worship. And for me, this is the first thing I do when my eyes go awake. I either look at the ceiling or I'll look out the window and I begin to think about the plans that I know I already have that day. The meetings I have, what I'll be walking into, or and I'll start praying for each one of those or praying uh, for uh, the, those people and, and going to, God, I have somewhat of a shell of a plan today, but I know there's going to be a lot of things I don't see coming or that are unexpected to me. And I what, when I do that, when I begin to give thanks, ask for supplication, he says, what? I'm going to give you a peace. Why? So I can guard your heart and mind. Because our hearts and minds are prone to wonder. And he said, when you be, the plan is for you to be a peaceful person. And the plan is for you to be prepared to walk in peace. 
Man, I, I, I have so much repentance to do in this area. I, I love being around um, those that uh, know that peace is the purpose. You know what I'm talking about? That peace is the purpose. Um, um, uh, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, remember, these are the shalom makers. This isn't about just like, no, this is going, listen, I want you whole. Like there are broken parts of me and there's broken parts of you. And so we point people to Jesus so that we can be reconciled. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. And so they go in to everything going, hey, how can I bring peace in this situation? How can I be a peacemaker? How can I bring shalom? And I love being around these. And I'll be honest with you, I, I need to do a better job as myself. I love the person who walks in whatever crisis, whatever difficulty, whatever room, and they just bring a peace with them. You know those people? Don't you love being around that? It doesn't matter what's going on. They know there's a purpose of reconciliation that's bigger. They know shalom is available, and they walk in with great peace. Because peace is a purpose. We bring wholeness to the broken. We bring peace to the displaced. And haven't we all displaced our peace? We tried to find it in that relationship. We try to find it in that job. We try to find it in financial security. And what? It's all a temporary false peace. And so we bring shalom. We bring the ministry of reconciliation. We bring the temporal under the eternal. Peace also under pressure. And here, peace under pressure. This is our uh, wake up moment in the message. Uh, you remember Jesus is asleep uh, in the boat, in the stern of the boat. And uh, these um, uh, seasoned sailors no, their life is in danger because of the storm. And so what do they do? They go tell Jesus to wake up. And Jesus wakes up, and what's Jesus' first word? Shalom, peace. Isn't that a great model? The very first words out of our mouth when we wake up probably should be what? Peace. Shalom. And Jesus says peace, and he has uh, the waters calmed and still. And these disciples said, what? Did, did you not care? We were going to die. And, if you, and we get that way, don't we? God, are you even paying attention? Don't you know the peril I'm in? Why aren't you worked up about this like I'm worked up about it? I don't know how I'm going to make a way. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And Jesus shows his disciples peace. That you can have peace under pressure. You know, when crisis comes, sometimes it brings out the worst in all of us, doesn't it? But in Jesus, he models what? No, no, that you can have great peace under pressure, that every crisis just needs Christ. And so bring the peace of Christ in to that crisis. Not only can you have peace under pressure, how about peace under persecution? It's 9 a.m. Jesus just got nailed to the cross. Jesus talks about loving your enemies, and here's Jesus, what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What's he doing? He's bringing peace. He can talk about all the wrong motives they have. How could you nail up the Son of God? Don't you know I'm here to save you? You're, you have no clue what's going on. You ever try to give one of those speeches? How does that work out? He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That you and I can have peace and bring peace even when we're being persecuted. Because his peace is permanent. Uh, when we get ready to leave the house, um, I'll say, let's roll. And, um, and it's my little ode uh, to Todd Beamer. You remember on 9-11, flight 93, it's the only flight that didn't reach its uh, destination. And Todd Beamer's recorded talking to uh, some guys going, hey, let's roll. Hey, listen, this is probably going to cost us our life, okay? But we're not going down this way. And I love it. He says, hey, let's roll. Why? Because even under the most dire circumstance, you can have the peace of God. To go, I'm going to willfully give my life up for others. Peace is also a person, isn't it? I mean, this was the whole prophecy of Jesus. Look, in, in Isaiah, uh, for us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and 
Prince of Peace. Now, Jesus, I talked to you about the first thing he said when they woke him up. He said, peace. What's the first word Jesus said after he returned uh, from uh, the, uh, the, the tomb when he got his disciples together? He appeared before them. And what did he say? Peace. He said, what? Peace be with you. As in literal, peace, the Prince of Peace. The pe Listen, you were worried. You were scattered. You didn't understand. I tried to tell you. You didn't believe me. I'm telling you, peace is with you and peace be with you. And then they looked in amazement. He said it a second time. Peace be with you as the Father has sent me the Prince of Peace. So I am sending you what? To be peace. You're going to bring peace to the world. You're going to reconcile people to God. And peace is found in a person and his name is Jesus. Jesus is the dictionary in which we look up the meaning of words. If you want to know what peace is, you look at the light of Jesus. The Bible, he's the alpha and the omega. He's every letter in the alphabet. You want to understand a word? You want, you want, if you want to understand peace, you understand Jesus. He's the dictionary. And peace is a person. Why is all this important? Because it's peace that leads us to praise. It's peace that leads us to praise. And in Revelation 5 here, 11 through 13, you have this beautiful uh, picture of heaven that was given to John the Revelator on the island of Patmos. And it says, Then I looked and I heard around the throne the living creatures and the elders and the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all of them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Listen, heaven is a place of shalom. Heaven is a place of peace and every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea what is worshiping that peace, they're in communion, they're in harmony with God. Peace is both in praise and peace is praise. That when you and I engage in praise or we engage in worship, we're in a state of peace. That's what makes it so powerful. That it doesn't matter what's going on in our life. It doesn't matter what's being happening to us. That we can go before God and we can say, worthy is the lamb. We can go before God and say, and we, and we give praise to him. Why? Because peace is present in us. That you can't fully praise if you're not peaceful. I mean, that's the whole point. There's a unity. There's a harmony that takes place. Peace leads to praise. Uh, and there is a war for our worship, of course. And there are things that want to take our attention and take our uh, affection. And, and worry will keep you from worshiping. It'll keep me from worshiping, right? Because I'm worried about five different things. And, and every Sunday, you think I get better at this. I, I'm sitting on the front row, and I'm always thinking about a guest first time. I go, like, oh, well, what was it? you know, guest is here, you know, this or that, that, this, and then this, and this. And, you know, we're such an imperfect place. And in fact, we're the perfect place for imperfect people because we're in perfect church with imperfect pastor. And, and Kelly's like, Jason, focus, focus. I'm trying to worship. Focus, worship. I don't know why y'all clapping on that, but you see what I'm saying? See how I'm missing my worry? I've got an opportunity to worship the king with you. And what? I'm thinking about something else. Worry will keep you from worry. Uh, wanting will keep you from worship. You're so discontent because you wish you had something else. And I wish I had that relationship or I wish I had that thing. And because your affections are drawn toward that, that's getting your attention. In fact, what you miss out on worshiping or waiting will keep you from worship. Waiting will keep, listen, some people go, man, okay, I'm just getting my life together. I'm gonna go to God. Okay, let me just, let me stop this habit and stop doing that. Then I can go to church. Let me just do this and do this, and I can have somebody come over to our house for a Bible study. Let me just do this and do this, and I can start serving. And you're missing out. You're sleepwalking. You're asleep at the wall. You think that you have to clean yourself up to come to God. Stop waiting for a perfect opportunity. You'll see that in a young couple sometimes. Well, we're just waiting for the right time to get married. We're just waiting for the right time to have kids. When is the right time to have kids? Some people are just waiting. I'm, I'm going to find a church. 
I, I'm gonna start. I'm, 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 I'm gonna start having a quiet time. Just if I can get a little bit more time that morning and this and that. And we, you're waiting. You're missing out. But a person at when there's peace and praise, and peace is praise. Peace comes from a place, doesn't it? Peace comes from our soul. Do you see that? This is why it's so important that you're at peace with God so you can begin to become at peace with all men. Why? Because it comes from your, that it is well with my soul. And we need to pray that would awake my soul. Uh, I love sport because um, I love to see the soul awaken and I love to see some passion. And uh, I like sports at all levels, but at professional sports, the fun thing about, you know, when uh, it's the last pitch of the World Series, you see a bunch of grown men jump around like kids. And even yesterday, right, we're, 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 we're watching uh, the Texans play, and, and I got to watch it with, uh, with uh, our family. And before the game, my dad is out there with a football, and he's throwing passes. He said, we're going to complete 100 passes before the game, right? One, two, they're going back until they get to uh, 100. My dad hadn't shown that much energy in a month, okay? Okay? No disrespect. Uh, you're feeling better. We got some iron. We got an iron infusion this week. But what? There's something about sport that gives you some energy. And then we're watching the game. Here's what I love. I think it was the first or the second pick six. What's happening? Uh, D'Amico Ryan, our coach, what? He's sprinting down the sideline. Why? Because he's got some chutzpah. He's got some passion. It doesn't matter how much he's gotten paid. His team is winning and he's excited. It comes from his soul, and I love there are things that awake our soul. And listen, we need, we, need our, we need our souls to be awakened in our heart. That same passion to say, man, I'm going to be a peacemaker. I'm coming with peace because peace comes from my soul. And I don't want to be asleep at the will. Is peace your missing piece? What would change if you could wake up every morning with his peace through worship? Are you living in peace or are you living in pieces? Jesus said this, John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Listen, I, I'm going to leave you peace. I'm going to give you peace. Not as the world gives. That will fall apart. Let not your hearts be troubled. Let not your heart be in pieces. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. I've overcome the world. And I give you a peace. And that peace is your plan. And that peace is your purpose. And that peace. Peace is good under pressure. And that peace is good under persecution because that peace is in a person and his name is Jesus. And that peace is going to lead to praise. And that peace comes from your soul that's at peace with God and wants to be at peace with others. Now listen, church, I, I know this message was for me. I know God's, his repentance comes from kindness from him. And he doesn't want me to stay where I'm at on the subject. And it's God's kindness that will lead me to change my mind the way I handle peace. And I'm just asking you to do the same. Would you just send Humility, go before the Lord, is there anywhere I need to repent in this area? That I'm not walking in the peace that you've left me and you've given me. Am I not being a peacemaker? Am I not pointing people to the harmony that can happen when their souls are right with God? And we can walk in wholeness in any situation that's broken can be fixed. Let's wake up to his peace with worship. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you that you call us to wake up. That the days and times, they're urgent. And they're such a gift. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. 
and we know we're not going to live forever, and we don't want to fall asleep at the wheel, and it starts with us. God, I pray for any person in here who's not at peace with you. They'd be at peace. They'd come to terms. Whatever they're bitter about, angry about, disagree with you about, God, I pray would you show them that it's their sin that's keeping them from fellowship with you, and you've already paid the price through your son on the cross so that can be forgiven and forgotten, and they can enjoy fellowship with you. I pray today they'd be at peace with you. God, I pray that we have the peace of God in us as we as we want to be at peace with all men as best we can to live in that kind of peace. And that your peace is the plan for every day. It's the purpose why we live. It's And our peace is good under pressure and it's good under persecution. Our peace is found in the Prince of Peace, you. Our peace will always lead us to praise. And when we're praising you, we're in peace. And God, I pray our soul would be awakened. There'd be passion. Wake up my heart. Wake up, Lord. We want to live in peace, real peace, not in pieces. Lord, we love you. May you be honored and glorified in the repentance that's happening right now. Right now. Those of us that are changing our mind, right now they're going, hey, man, I need to turn from this. I need to turn to this. That I want to be called the Son of God. I want to be a peacemaker. I want to wake up every day with His peace and worship Him and to praise Him. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name.